All right, on this video, we're going to go ahead and do a series of four um, urines. Usually on my videos, I just do one culture at a time, but I'm going to go ahead and do four of these. The first one is just going to be kind of a, a gram-negative urine. The next one is going to be a gram-positive urine. And the last two will be mixed cultures that have more than one colony type. Okay, so when, generally when a urine is set up, um, it's set up on two plates. We have a sh just a regular 5% sheep blood plate, and then we have a, a biplate with McConkie's and CNA. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, when this is set up, it's used with a calibrated loop. So you can either have a calibrated loop that is 1 100th or 1 1,000th of a milliliter. And the reason why we do that is because uh, the doctor needs to know if, um, you know, just kind of get a general idea of how much bacteria is there. So if we're using a calibrated loop, meaning that it's delivering a, a fixed amount, a predictable amount, then if there's 10,000 colonies as opposed to 100,000 colonies, that's, well, that's important information for the doctor to know as far as treating the patient. Okay, now just on that note of, of what I said about using the calibrated loop, uh, just to kind of give you some guidelines, urine cultures are usually uh, reported out with a number. Now on other of my, uh, others of my, other of my videos, you'll hear me saying rare, few, moderate, many to describe the amount of bacteria, but with urines we use a specific number. And, you know, we, we're not going to go ahead and count all the colonies on a plate, so rather we use ranges, like under 10,000, 10 to 20, 20 to 50, 50 to 100, greater than 100,000. And the um, label that we use with that number is greater than 100,000 colony forming units per milliliter, or CFU per ml. So you're going to see that uh, those terms used with urine cultures. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our plates here. And the reason why we have three different types is now we know that um, uh, with my students, I insist that they have a clear understanding of media because media can give you a lot of information uh, about what <coughs> excuse me, I'm recovering from the flu, uh, a lot of information about what is growing. So we have a CNA McConkie's plate. So we know that CNA is a selective differential plate. And selective means that it is selective for gram-positive organisms, including yeast, and it inhibits gram-negative organisms. Now, it's differential because... With a blood plate, one of the, the differential feature of it is hemolysis. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at our McConkie's. Now, McConkie's is also a selective differential plate. Now, selective, it's selective for gram-negative organisms. And uh, when I say gram-negative, I'm talking about the, uh, the very healthy uh, Enterobacteriaceae and Pseudomonas as opposed to the more fastidious hem uh, Haemophilus. Um, it's differential because it's used, uh, either a colony will be pink or it will be clear, and that's based on lactose fermentation. So whenever we look at colonies on McConkie's and there's growth, we should always be commenting on whether it's lactose positive or lactose negative. Now, in this particular uh, urine culture, uh, there's nothing growing on the CNA, so that tells me that we don't have any gram-positive organisms growing here, and it looks like we only have one colony type on the McConkie's, and they're pink, so that means they're lactose fermenters, lactose positive. All right, now the other plate is just a sheep blood plate, and the reason that is here is that's the plate that we use to determine, to count, to make our count about how many different, uh, uh, the count of colonies. Now your calibrated loop is basically used on this and the two other plates, but this is the one we use for counting. Okay, now I am not going to count all these because there are just too many to count. So this would be greater than 100 colonies, which 
you would report out is greater than 100,000 CFUs per ml. Now, another thing we have to, we have to take into consideration is how we're going to work this thing up. And bearing that in mind, because, you know, there are different ways that urines can be collected. They can be collected, for example, as a clean catch or a midstream. Now, that method tends lends itself to being the most the one that gets contaminated most often uh, but there are also other methods uh, for example uh, indwelling catheter or uh, even a suprapubic aspirate um, but generally speaking uh, if somebody is, if we have a urine that is from a catheterized or a suprapubic aspirate we're going to use a much lower threshold uh, as far as like working up an organism so, because basically when we're reading urines, what we're trying to tell the doctor when we're reading the numbers, if there is contamination, colonization, or infection. And, you know, in this particular patient, I would say it's obviously infection. It's greater than 100,000 of one particular organism. And that, actually, that particular organism looks like a classic organism that causes UTIs, urinary tract infections. All right. Um... Now, a catheterized specimen, if it's, you know, 10,000, now that maybe that's significant. That's, it all depends on the guidelines or the standard operating practice or SOP in the facility that you're working in. You must follow the SOP and use the guidelines set out in there as far as, like, what you're going to work up. So let's move on here. So what do we do with this plate? As I said, we have greater than 100,000 of a... Now, these, this organism on here is the same one on here. So, um, and this particular uh, organism looks very much like E. coli, which is the number one cause of urinary tract infections, especially in women, all right? So whenever we have a gram-negative rod, um, the first test that we always do... Uh, is a an oxidase. And remember, we don't do the oxidase test off a plate, off a McConkie's plate, because it's a color-based test. And the pl if you take it off here, the colonies are already colored, so it may uh, affect how you read <coughs> that, that, that test. So we'd go ahead and do that uh, test off here. And uh, guessing that it's going to be oxidase negative, this would go to the instrument, uh, for identification and susceptibility testing. All right, so we want to get this information to the doctors, so we want to, you know, send out a, a preliminary report. Um, so the pre preliminary report for this particular culture is going to be greater than 100,000 uh, CFUs per ml of probable E. coli identification and susceptibility testing to follow. All right, let's go ahead and move on here um, to the next urine culture. Okay. That's our sheep blood. Here's our biplate, and we have CNA and McConkie's. Now, in contrast to the last culture type that we just did, this one has growth on the CNA and nothing on the McConkie's. So what does that tell us? Well, as I said in the previous, uh, talking about the previous culture, is that CNA is selective. And it's selective for gram-positive organisms and yeast. So, what we need to determine at this point, first of all, let's just, I'm going to have a little bit closer look just to make sure that we're dealing with a single colony type and it's not a mixed culture. So looking at this, it's probably kind of hard for you to see. To me, it looks like it's just one colony type. So that's good. That means that we can go ahead and uh, proceed with uh, identifying this organism. Okay. All right. Now, uh, doing our count off the sheep blood, it looks like, again, you know, like the last culture, you know, these are definitely smaller colonies. But I would say, again, we have, you know, greater than 100,000 colonies. So regardless of if whether it's a clean catch or it's a catheterized urine, we're going to go ahead and, and work up this organism. So I don't want to go too much into or into the workups on these uh, on these uh, vid in these videos. It's more about just reading the plates, but I have to jump into this a little bit. So if we talk about gram positive, you know, organisms that are pathogens in urine, basically the three most common are Staph saprophyticus, Enterococcus, and yeast or Candida albicans. 
So at this point, now, um, for you looking at this, it's just kind of a, a, a creamy whitish colony. Now, me, I can see this. These, these particular uh, colonies have what are called feet. And this is what yeast tend to do, or Canada albican specifically tends to do. It starts to just kind of send off these, uh, these uh, little kind of, here's the colony, and you just have these little feet around the perimeter of the colonies. And that's what I'm seeing on, this, on these uh, colonies here. So uh, we could probably work it up as yeast. If, I, if it were my students, um, I would make them gram stain. Because, you know, it's really, especially when you're new in microbiology, you really shouldn't be making assumptions. Just because you see a white colony and Staph saprophyticus is one of the p common pathogens, you shouldn't just assume that that, that, that colony is, is probably Staph saprophyticus. You really should be doing a gram stain. So uh, at this point, um, I would make the students do a gram stain and then work it up from there. Now, me as a microbiologist, uh, I feel pretty confident that those are yeast. I can see the feet. I've seen many, many urine cultures with this before. I feel very confident about it. So I'm going to go ahead and work it up as if it were yeast. But once again, we want to send a preliminary um, uh, uh, report out to the doctor. And at this point, it's going to be greater than 100,000 uh, yeast identification to follow.